Okay, so this is number one, and we're looking at two parametric um, equations, and we're going to not only fill in the table, but we're also going to graph them, very detailed-like. Okay, so let's go to begin by looking at where do we begin. All right, so time is zero is your initial value, and what you're going to do is basically replace these t values with zero, and if you were to do that, for this first equation, you get 7 minus 0, pretty much, is going to give you a result value of um, uh, 7. And if you put 0 in for t over here, you'd get negative 1 plus 0, you'd get a negative 1. So in a sense, this is a coordinate point that is 7, negative 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 1. We're going to label this as time is equal to 0. Okay, And this is where we're starting, per se. Okay, so if we put 1 now, we're going to do it just like we did with replacing 0. We're going to put 1 inside where these t's are at, and we would get the following values, 4 and 1. 4 for x, 1 for y. Now you can do this over and over and over, or you can see that there is a pattern per se. With the x equations, it's basically going to drop down each increment by 3. And you can see that from 7 and 4 of how it's dropping down by a slope, quote unquote, of 3. So the next one would drop down from 4 to 1 because that was a drop of 3. And then the next one would be negative 2. So with the y value, you can see that each incremental jump is going to be up by 2. So just like you see from negative 1 up to 1, which is a jump of 2, the next number would be 3, and then it would be 5. So that's a fast way to do, the, do it rather than plugging in the t values into each parametric equation one at a time as you go through. So let's go ahead and now graph the points. So we have 4, 1, we have 1, 3, and then we have negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 2, 5 is where that one's going to be. And all we really want you to do is just label them as time. So that's time one, this is when time is two, and this is when time is three. Okay, so we will have dots for all of them, and then we're going to show that starting at time is equal to zero, you're not going to have anything going to the right because you're showing that it begins at zero and it travels in that direction. And just a little extra tidbit of information you can notice the change is a slope of, let me go ahead and do a rise over run if you will. So rise over run is y over x, and the y change here was a positive 2 over a negative 3. Okay, and I'll color coordinate that so you can see where we got those from the parametric equations. And if you see, this slope does have a down 2 um, to the, I'm oh, sorry, up. Let me do this again. So it has rise of 2, left 3. So rise of 2, left 3. So if I were to look at the graph, I'd, from this point, I'd rise 2, and then I'd go left 3. From this point, I'd rise 2, and I'd go left 3. Okay. And just so you know, a rise over 2, left 3, does give us a negative 2 thirds. And a negative 2 thirds can also be seen as a negative 2 over a positive 3, which is what I was trying to show you earlier which is from a point you'd go down to and over three. Down to and over three. Just wanted to show you that extra kind of relationship just so that you can kind of verify with yourself that sure enough your graph is correct, okay? All right, so now let's look at this one over here. So we're gonna go through this a little bit faster as far as like a shortcut per se. And we see that there's no value here that's all by itself. Like there's no constant the way this 7 was over here by itself. So we know that value is going to be 0 at, at its initial value. And over here, the constant is 8. So it's going to start at 0, 8. And notice the jump. It will jump by 2 every increment. So 2, 4, 6 for the x. And then the coefficient of this t value over here is a negative 1. So it's going to drop down by 1 each and every time. Now we're just going to quickly go and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is 0, 8, which is time 0. And then 2, 7. And then 4. So 4 is about here. We're going to go up to 6. And then 6, 5. So t is 1, t is 2, and t is 3. And you can verify it by 
rise again by kind of looking at this rise over run. And the rise was a negative 1, and the run was a positive 2. So it has this negative 1 half feel to it. Otherwise, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, so on and so forth, that creates this line. So my graph is verified, and I can go ahead and graph it out in this direction. Remember, just a reminder, we are looking for an initial value as far as that endpoint is concerned. We're going to be that nitpicky on the graph. And we're also looking for this arrow to show the direction of which the equations are traveling.